And the Mariners just lost 2-1 to one to the New York Mets. And this is not the New York Mets of last year. This is the New York Mets that just unloaded their team, including trading away Justin Verlander back to the Houston Ro Rockets. Astros. Trading them to the Houston Astros. And the Mariners had a 1-0 lead on this. And before I even get into this video, hit that subscribe button, like the video, hit that notification to get those content because I am definitely going to be more serious on putting out more content. And also, this is now Rooftop Sports, no longer Rooftop Mariner. That one got the Order 66. So let's get into it. So the Mariners, they they jumped out to a lead. Well, it wasn't that like early of a lead. So it started with... J.P. Crawford hitting his 13th home run of the season, career high, in the top of the fourth inning. And before the sixth inning, Logan Gilbert was just dealing. He pitched six in the two innings, gave up seven hits, but he made it up with nine strikeouts. And it looked like the Mariners maybe were going to smooth their way into this victory. But I did sense something a little bit concerning where the Mariners did have runners in scoring position several times, and they failed to score each time. And I was thinking, yeah, if the Mariners don't score, this is going to catch up because, yeah, it's the Mets. They're pretty much on their heyday. But it doesn't mean you just play complacency. Like, you got still got Brandon Nimmo out there who did just hit his home run. He has now hit his 20th home run of the season. So it was 1-1, and Mariners still had opportunities to score, and it didn't happen. Then there was a scare moment in the seventh inning where Logan Gilbert did give up a couple guys to get on base and that's where he was up in the 97 pitches and then Scott Service pulled him which this time I actually did agree with him like if he's not doing the job if he's kind of tired and they kind of figured him out by now why not get something to mop it up and they brought in Gabe Spire to do it which you know I, I don't like pulling starters in situations but this one was fine and he got out of that inning Mariners failed to score once again, and then going into the eighth inning, and this is what really killed the Mariners, I saw that Gabe Spire was pulled after just one pitch. Let me repeat this. He was pulled after just one pitch for Andres Munoz, who had shown his struggles recently, and although he's had a couple good outings, his last two outings against Kansas City and Oakland, where he did close those games very well in one, two, three fashions. He put in Andres Munoz when the game was tied. Like, out of all pitchers, you had Justin Topa, you had Matt Brash. You had plenty of options to choose from, including having a day off. But out of all pitchers, Scott Service picks. Andres Munoz, who's supposed to be the closer, not the guy for eighth inning. Like, you could have used anyone else. And then that led to Dan Vogelbach hitting an RBI single. And even before that, predictably, Munoz was having his problems. He doesn't have confidence in this slider. It's just not there, because of probably because of that injury. So I think this is where Scott was trying to be a little bit cute, trying to get the fastball in there, but it didn't really work. I think he should have just kept Gabe Spire in because he only pitched not even a quarter of an inning. Like, no, he only pitched one pitch, and you let Munoz pitch. Like, especially just one pitch, you should have just let him finish the inning, of course. But I don't know. Now that makes Andres Munoz six, three and six, making him look really, really bad. And the Mariners would ultimately lose the game. And the worst part of this loss is, as of this video... Texas Rangers are down 5-1, to one, and it looks like the Yankees, they are pretty much, they have a really good shot of winning. They are up 6-2, to two. so had the Mariners won this game, they would have picked up a lead in that division, but instead, everything's going to be set to par. Blue Jays game is tied as of now, but it looks like Blue Jays might have the upper hand on that one. So today was a very big loss opportunity. But of course, you're going to have the half glass full Mariner fans going, well, at least they, at least everyone else lost. Yeah, but if everyone else lost, you got to win that game. Now, if the Mariners got completely blown out, fine. I'll t fine, just accept it. But the fact that they lost in this kind of fashion where the way they lost was just 100% preventable, I can't accept something like that. 
like, I think where the game was lost, it was when Scott Service pulled Gabe Spire for Andres Munoz in a non-save situation. And I've been saying it throughout the entire season that he's got to buckle down and make better decisions. And if he doesn't, Mariners still actually have a pretty solid chance of not making the playoffs if this trend continues. Now I know I'm going to get this whole, oh, you're not a true fan. You're just a Scott Service hater. It's not hating. I'm just not liking his decisions. I don't agree with it. And I've already been trained by a good friend of mine on YouTube, the Northwest Sports Fanatics. He's telling me to dial it down, which I do agree with him. I, I probably should not go all, all of the emotion, but I just can't help but give the facts that Service pulled Gabe Spire after just one pitch. And I think you should just let him pitch because if you keep just burning up your entire bullpen, you're going to have nothing left. Now, fortunately, at least only two pitches were used in the bullpen, so hopefully the Mariners can pick that up. But I just can't stand losing a Logan Gilbert start, especially on the road where he's been so dominant. And now in the next two games, let's take a look and see what we've got. we got Luis Castillo against Peterson, who has a 5.23 ERA. you got to win that game. That one has no excuses. And then Sunday is to be determined. Maybe that will be a Brian Wu game or George Kirby. I mean... I'd probably put in George Kirby if he's healthy, to, just to at least give it a chance, give a chance to actually win that game before we go into Cincinnati. And that series is not going to be easy either, because Cincinnati, as much as they have struggled recently, they are still fighting for a playoff spot. They're still at seventy and sixty-seven, so they actually are a bit down. They're six games back, and if you look at it in terms of the wild card, they're still one and a half games back. So. Expect that to be very competitive. So the Mariners are going to have to win their last two games on this. Next time, they gotta they got to hit better. I mean, Julio Rodriguez just got back. He got a couple hits out of it. But they got to do better. They got to score those runs because one run lead is just not safe. And service, as talented as your pitching staff is, you still got to make your better decisions. But those are my quick thoughts on this game. Of course, I wasn't able to cover this game because hashtag don't quit your day job. But I do intend... And I do plan to go on live for the Mariners-Mets games for the next two days. So we'll see as long as the whole don't quit your day job doesn't get in the way. But it is what it is. And thanks for watching. Have a good day. Go Mariners.